Hi everyone, it's Sonia here. So Elon Musk has bought Twitter and now he's going to um, save the world by restoring free speech, right? Or is it? Um, I don't know how sure are we that we really know who Elon Musk is and whose side he's really on. I did a little bit of investigating and uh, I kind of have my suspicions. I'm gonna show you some info and you let me know after what you think. Is he on the side of freedom? Or is he on the side of the Great Reset? That's the question. If you liked the video, thank you for hitting like. Thank you for your support on Patreon that keeps my channel going. And also, I want to let you know, BioTrust is having their special again of up to 51% off Keto Elevate MCT Oil Powder. Keto Elevate contains 5 grams of pure caprylic acid, the most readily ketogenic MCT. You simply put a scoop of this delicious powder into your coffee, smoothie, or yogurt for increased physical energy, decreased appetite, improved mental clarity and focus, improved physical performance and recovery, and more. So if you're interested, please click the link for more info and a discount. So look, I know Elon Musk is supposed to be this great hero who's going to fix the world's problems. I mean, at least when it comes to censorship on Twitter. But um, I think there's more to know about Elon Musk. There's more to him. And spoiler alert, I'm starting to get the feeling that in The Great Reset, there are the bad actors, the villains, and then there's the good actors, the saviors. They're all just playing their part. And I'm starting to think that Elon Musk is just playing the savior, but he's really in with Klaus Schwab, The Great Reset, and The Fourth Industrial Revolution. So let me show you what I found. So here's an article from 2017 from the World Economic Forum. These workers have got a microchip implanted in their hand from their employer. And so they're talking here about cashless society, but not just contactless bank cards, but actually, what if you didn't have to carry any device at all? Yay, it's all just in your hand. How convenient. So here in 2017, they're talking about a passport for everything. Hmm, a passport, you say? We foresee the use of RFID technology to drive everything from making purchases in our office break room market, opening doors, use of copy machines, logging into our office computers, unlocking phones, sharing business cards, storing medical health information, and used as payment at other RFID terminals. So pretty much like a sort of all-encompassing technology which we're kind of starting to see the beginning of its implementation not just in these overzealous swedes with their microchips but in other forms also like digital ids and other kinds of passports so what does elon musk have to say and as you know he is making this brain chip the neural link yeah if you didn't think that a microchip was transhumanist enough elon musk takes it a step further and says openly the goal is symbiosis with machines Klaus Schwab, again, um, on camera, recorded discussing this, that this is where we're heading. Well, that is pretty much exactly the same thing that Elon Musk is aiming for. So they're definitely on the same page when it comes to that. On a side note, if you're wondering how it's going with Elon Musk's experiments with this brain chip, this article from February says there was extreme suffering. 15 of 23 monkeys with his brain chip. Neuralink reportedly died. Um, actually, it was the subject of quite some controversy and investigation, although Elon Musk says, we didn't do anything wrong. It wasn't us. Something happened in the lab, but it wasn't our fault. Apparently, the glue that they were using to put this thing in the brain pretty much just killed the monkeys. Something bio glue. Anyway, Elon Musk and Klaus Schwab are pretty much on the same page when it comes to this transhumanist microchips and brain chips thing. Moving right along to 2018, World Economic Forum, four reasons cities should embrace universal basic income. 
well, um, I don't want to go off on too much of a tangent here, but at this point it's becoming like kind of more and more obvious, not just according to my own speculations, but the words of Yuval Noah Harari and, and um, others who are explaining that as AI and machines take over more and more, you're going to have a whole class of people who have become obsolete in terms of the workforce who are going to need universal basic income. How does Elon Musk feel about universal basic income? As a reminder, he's in favor of universal basic income. So that's two out of two so far. I'm sure he knows exactly what the plan is and why we need universal basic income. Moving right along to 2019 World Economic Forum. Why carbon tax is crucial to curbing climate change. Of course, you know, they talk about corporations needing to reduce their emissions. But I did a little video just a while ago, which was showing that this is going to go beyond corporations, that it's going to affect the individual. And this is all going to be possible once there's programmable digital currency. You, you're going to have a certain amount of basically carbon credits that will determine what you'll be able to spend your money on. For example, some things will be limited. Like you would only be able to spend a certain amount of money on travel based on how many carbon credits it uses. And that would include gas for your car. Also, something like meat could be rationed. You need carbon credits to buy the meat. Like you're not just using your money, but also your carbon credits. So this is part of the plan. It's going to be not just... Um, corporations, but also just people like you and me down the road. How does Elon Musk feel about the carbon tax? It's high time there was a carbon tax. May 2021. Once again, totally on board with what Klaus Schwab's vision of the world is. 2021. Three tactics to overcome COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy. So... World Economic Forum discussing what are we going to do about people who don't want to take it. Anyhow, I mean, clearly the World Economic Forum is very much on board with this. I mean, why wouldn't they be? How does Elon Musk feel about it? To be clear, I do support vaccines in general and COVID vaccines specifically. The science is unequivocal. In very rare cases, there's an allergic reaction, but this is easily addressed with an EpiPen. So the only reason that I'm putting this on the list is that since this had been a divisive issue and uh, an issue that had created a lot of censorship online, I mean, there was like the allowable discussion and then there's the stuff you're not allowed to say. I just want to point out that, you know, Elon Musk is a big supporter of the COVID vaccine. So once again, on the same page as World Economic Forum, then that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> Where I get in hot water. Now, here's another thing uh, from Klaus Schwab. What he said about the fourth industrial revolution, we will change you. Once again, it's this theme of transforming people. Like basically, like he said, the fusion of the, the physical, the biological, and and the machine, the digital. The difference of this fourth uh, industrial revolution is it doesn't change what you are doing. It changes you if you take a genetic editing, uh, just as an example. It's you who are changed. Yeah. And of yeah. course, this has a big impact on yeah. your identity. Hmm. Just thought I'd throw that in there. Not that it has anything to do with what we just mentioned about the COVID vaccine. It's just another aspect of how they want to transform humanity, these new gene editing therapies. But it's kind of weird how he talks about it like part of the revolution would be, what, everyone is taking these gene editing therapies? What are they going to do, turn us into some kind of superhumans? Or something else? We don't know. Anyway, it's pretty clear that Elon Musk is 100% on board with everything that the World Economic Forum is promoting. So what's he going to do on Twitter? Because that's the big question. Is he going to bring free speech? You know, it looks kind of weird. Eh? It's like he's totally on board with all this stuff for the fourth industrial revolution and the Great Reset. So 
Why would he want people to say anything that goes against it or that undermines it? I mean, don't we all want people to think the same way so they all get on board? So what's he going to do? Anyway, one thing he's going to do, uh, what Elon Musk's Twitter plans to authenticate all humans means. Well, as you see here, he's going to tell you about an extension of Twitter's verification system. Not such a big deal, right? We already have verification for a lot of things. But one, one problem with this, it could be creating a tiered system of accounts. Those linked to real life and those not. Like maybe you won't get traffic if you're not authenticated. Another issue that was raised was privacy concerns. Um, you know, uh, major red flags for human rights here in terms of safety from authoritarian regimes or repressive employers. Like you wouldn't be able to use Twitter without authenticating as your real name and then maybe your boss could find out what you said and you could lose your job but what's even more concerning about this extension of the verification system is there could be a plan to open a verification open up verification more widely to those who are willing to back up their profile with proof of identity such as a passport now in the context of what Schwab was talking about on the World Economic Forum about your digital passport, I mean, he's talking about it as an implantable microchip, which you don't actually have now, obviously. But with the advent of these digital IDs and these digital passports, could it be possible that you will only be able to authenticate your account if you use your digital ID? Hmm. That would be kind of concerning. To me, that would be the most concerning part. When you say passport, is that your real passport or is that your digital passport? Hmm. So it's kind of funny how it's like Elon Musk is on board with all this stuff from the World Economic Forum. Kind of makes you wonder, is he involved with them? If you try to look into this, you'll find there's really not that much information. But there is one thing that did surface, uh, which is discussed here on first fact check. Elon Musk was a Klaus Schwab young global leader and they refer to this article from Bloomberg which was discussed also here on America Out Loud. Now the problem with this article is it's behind a paywall but apparently in this article um, they named Elon Musk as a young global leader back in 2008. In an article titled Young Global Leaders, Anderson Cooper and Leonardo DiCaprio are in the most exclusive private social network in the world by Bruce Nussbaum, published March 17, 2008. It's revealed that Elon Musk, the chairman of Tesla Motors, the much publicized electric sports car company, is a new YGL. And that's like the only place that you can find that if you want to get behind that paywall. If you go to um, the World Economic Forum, as they say here on First Pack Check, you can go there and you can see who all the YGLs are. But for some reason, um, Elon Musk's name is missing from the list. So that would mean, I guess, one of two things. Either the WF is trying to hide the fact that Elon Musk was a YGL or Bloomberg made a mistake when they reported um, in 2008. So which is it? I don't know. I tend to think that they're just trying to cover it up because they've done that with other people too. So it looks like Elon Musk is very much in bed with Klaus Schwab. And there's one last thing that makes me kind of suspicious more than ever. Now here's an article from Vanity Fair 2018. Thanks to Elon Musk and Grimes, the summer of strange love isn't entirely over. Now, I really don't care about the article, but I do care about the picture because Musk was wearing an interesting jacket. Now, from a distance, it just looks like a white blazer. But if you zoom in, you'll see that there is something printed in the fabric, like 
written into the weave of the fabric. And what it says is Novus Ordo Seclorum, which is a phrase that I'm pretty sure you're familiar with. It means New World Order or New Order of the Ages and is also on the American dollar bill along with that pyramid and that all-seeing eye. So you kind of have to wonder, uh, why is Elon Musk wearing a jacket that says New World Order? And here are some pictures of Elon Musk's mom, May Musk, given the old all-seeing eye hand sign. Seems like it runs in the family. And then as it so happens, he's totally on board with the World Economic Forum's agenda for the Great Reset. Uh, some people say that the Great Reset is just a new name for the New World Order. So all that right there kind of makes me wonder what is going to happen to Twitter in the next little while uh, as Elon Musk takes over. Is it going to be more freedom or is it going to be less? So let me know what you think. Leave me your comments below, please. And that's it. Um, if you liked the video, thanks again for hitting like. Thank you again for your support on Patreon. And don't forget to check out the link for the uh, Keto Elevate if you'd like that stuff and you want a discount. And thanks for listening to me, and I'll see you next time.